Hi, my name is Gene Beretta. Welcome back. It's time to make some more animashes. For those of you joining in for the first time, an animash, an animash is an animal made up of three or four, we've been doing three or four different animals, mashing them together to make one new, brand new, unique animal that we create together. And I have no idea what they're going to look like until I'm actually doing them, which is all, all part of the fun. If you don't know my work, you can always visit my website, which is jeanberetta.com. You can see more of what I do. But right now, we are going to get busy because I see some of you are back. I see, yes, I remember you from, you were in, you came back for each one of them, didn't you? Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm so glad you do too, because I don't want to, I'd get awfully lonely here. Just me, me and the animash. So I'm glad you joined in. We're going to start by picking three, let's pick four animals. We're going to pick the most distinguishing feature of each of these animals and put them all together to make our own. And I'm going to start off, we're going to go to our list. You've been submitting ideas through the course of the week. And I'm going to start with the giraffe sent in by Jeffrey. Thank you, Jeffrey. We'll put giraffe right up here so we don't forget. You see that? Good. I like this one. We haven't had this suggestion before. The Highland Cow by Abigail. And the Highland Cow is very different looking than a normal milk cow or other breed of cow that uh, we all see. And uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about in a minute. How about The Walrus by Gemma, sent in by Gemma. What I like to do is pick animals that are very different in their appearance. That makes the end result look even more surreal and insane looking, insane looking. That's the goal. The crazier the better. And finally, let's go with the kangaroo sent in by Ethan. Kangaroo. So, if you've been with me before, you know how we begin, right? Not with the marker. Pencil. Because we're going to block in all the big shapes, make sure that we have enough room to do what we want to do. And um, so that's why I always start with the pencil. And you can erase the pencil after we, after we do in, put in the dark lines with marker. So, giraffe. We've done giraffe before, and... I guess the best feature of the giraffe is always the long neck, right? So we're going to block in where that big long neck is going to go. And this doesn't have to be a nice neat line at this point. It's just blocking in the shapes. At the top here, we're going to do the highland cow's head. And the way that the highland cow's head is so different is that they have all of this hair covering their eyes almost like a really long Beatles haircut. Now, most of you are too young to know who the Beatles are, but ask your parents or your grandparents to play you some music by the Beatles. I think you'll love it. They're my favorite group. Let me know you, email me. Let me know what you think of the Beatles if you do, along with all these drawings that you're doing. I love to see, I've been getting examples of drawings kids have been doing, and I'm really proud of you for all the work you're putting in and all the, all the creative directions you're taking it on your own. Now, the highland cow also has these big, long horns that come out of the top sides of its head like that. And some big cow ears off to the side. And you, you don't even see their, their eyes. You just see their nose coming out from under the hair like that. And then that's going to move down into the giraffe neck. And then the giraffe has all these squares and block patterns in its neck. Let's then, for the body, let's go with that big, massive walrus body. We have it it's just lying down like that. Big, massive walrus body. And the tail just kind of wraps around and has like a split in the middle, like that sort of a shape, right? And uh, what kind of, should we give it uh, walrus arms or flippers? 
four. Let's do let's do a little cow hoof. So here's here's a very small cow arm, and here's the hoof. <laughs> and then we'll have one coming out the back. And of course, you don't see all of that arm because it's behind the body, right? So you see these little little cow legs, not arms, legs and the hoofs. So, oh, you know what? I just thought of something. I'm going to erase that arm for now. And don't worry about it. If you've still got the lines in there, you can always just erase it later after you've used the dark lines. Uh, for the kangaroo, what do you say we put a pouch right in the front here, like a kangaroo pouch? See how I'm always kind of changing as I go? If you make a mistake or you make it, you have a change of idea, you can always just uh, make the change. No rules. What do kangaroos hold in their pouch? Little joeys, or baby kangaroos. They call them joeys. So I'm going to do a little baby version of this animal. So here's the highland cow head and nose and giraffe neck, and we'll put little tiny hoofs right there. And I think that's, we've got all the animals. Is that crooked? It's hard to tell on this angle. Sometimes when I draw from the side, uh, things look a little slanted. Let's go. It's time for the marker phase. <clears throat> we've got everything blocked in. And I'm gonna start way at the top here. I'm going to start with the really bushy hair. I'm not going to draw the whole back line yet. Just making really bushy hair coming down over the face. All right? It really is very long. You can't see the eyes at all. And then the nose comes out here. Like that. Beetle's haircut on that Highland cow. The bottom jaw, going to bring it right there down to the neck. That reminds me of the old Beatles cartoon, the way they used to draw Ringo with the long, big nose. And he would go, <laughs> yeah. That was his big catchphrase. Hey, Ringo, come over here. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to draw this horn coming out of the side of the head here, right from underneath some of the hair. And then the ear, I'm going to stick out to the side like that. And you can see some of the, well, well let's finish the head. And then you can see some of the hair there as well. I'm just going to put some, some, some more strands of hair in the front. And the second horn, pretty groovy. Now I'm going to be stuck doing my Liverpool accents. Long giraffe neck, all the way down. I'm going to stop it right about there because we don't want to draw over the little Joey's head. We're going to need to name this too, which is always a fun thing to do at the end of these. Let's, one big long line. Come around the tail and then continue the line all the way across the bottom. And this is usually a little, little darker, so I'm just going to put some lines here just to make it a little darker. And uh, before I do this leg hoof, I'm going to do the joey just so we have, make sure we have enough room for the joey, which is a little more important than getting the length of this arm correct. So here we are with little baby joey and his little baby beetle's head cut. And it's baby horns. You're really just repeating the head you drew up here, only smaller. And the nose. 
in the mouth. You see that? It's a little far away for you. It's a little small. And then, oops, I forgot the ear. Let's leave it out. It's not a real animal, so <laughs> the baby hasn't grown its ears yet. That's how young it is. Just, they're really tiny. They're hidden under the hair, but they will grow bigger and larger as it ages. Now, before I draw the, the rim of the pouch, let's draw one of his hoofs there and another hoof there because those are going to be hanging on top of the hoof. If this is the rim of the hoof, I mean, if this is the rim of the pouch, the hoof is sitting on top like this. He's looking around like, mm -hmm. okay, so now we can do the rim of the pouch right there. And then you can see how it wraps around like this. And there's the back rim. I'm going to darken this a little bit. This is the inside of the pouch, so you can kind of see. You can kind of get a sense of the fact that it's three dimensional and there's a little pocket in there. Right? Little, uh, you know, we didn't put on the giraffe neck, those little square shapes. I'm going to go back and add those. Squares, I'm going to darken them as I go. If I had more time, I would darken these in with much neater lines. But you can do that. You can take the time you need, even after we're drawing together. And one more. OK. Finally, the Highland Cow leg and a large size hoof. Hoof. I'm not going to draw the back one because it's just going to get in the way. Actually, here's an idea. I'm not going to draw the. I'm not going to draw the arm matching the level of this arm. I'm going to have the arm come up. like he's waving to us. And we're going to see the underside of the hoof. He's waving. You know what action lines are? Those are action lines. It gives you the, the impression that it's going and it's moving. It's moving the air around. So we've got, uh, we've got the animal waving to us. And I always like to put a little bit of shadow underneath so that it doesn't look like the animal is floating in the air. You can see a shadow and you get a sense of that's, that's the surface of, uh, of where this animal is sitting. So what is this animal called? We've got giraffe, highland cow, walrus, and kangaroo. I know you're probably saying a few things in your in your head at home i'm going to say a a oh, this is a tough one a why why giraffe why giraffe because you're getting walrus wa and highland well let's see let's see uh, Wakal Garaf. That's getting really complicated. Wa Cow Garaf. The wa is from the walrus, cow, obviously. Gar from the kangaroo, garu, and rafam. So this is uh Wilma, Wilma the Wakal Giraffe. Ta da! All right, we got one down and one to go. We'll take a look at Wilma at the end again. I want to move on because we're 
we have a fixed time when we want to do these. So for the second one, I'm going to pick the flamingo sent in by Caitlin. Thank you, Caitlin. Flamingo. And then I'm going to pick the fish sent in by Jen. And the rabbit sent in by Bella. Finally, the snake sent in by Christopher. And I'm sorry if I didn't choose yours this week, um, but there's always next week. Right? Keep the, uh, the ideas coming, and, and you, you can always do your own. Remember that. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with a big fish head. Part head, part body. It's going to go like right around there. Yeah. Right? But I'm not going to do the back fin yet because I think I'm going to extend this body into and wrap it around like a snake, a snake's tail. Yeah, I need a little more room in the back there because I'm going to wrap it around here and put some rattles on it, like a rattlesnake. And those are going to go right there at the back. Can you see that all right? Hmm. That's okay. Yep. So this snake tail is going to come wrap around into the rattlesnake's tail. Fish head. And rabbit. What else? Rabbit ears. This is really weird looking. Give it a little round cartoon rabbity nose. And a big bulgy snake eyes. And they have those vertical pupils almost like the cat, right? At least what I'm remembering. And finally the flamingo legs. Long skinny legs. I'm going to do that famous position that the flamingos always have, where there's one leg straight and one leg comes about halfway down. Well, let me change the angle of that. It's not straight down. It's a little angled forward and then at the knee it bends this way and then the foot comes in there. I think that's good. It's good enough to get started. Time for the inking. Let's start right with the rabbit ears. All right, and then before I draw the other ear, I'm going to come around and do the fish head, the top of the fish head. And then while I'm here, I'm going to add the rabbit nose. And then I'm going to continue the fish mouth and the fish jaw. I'm going to stop right there right in the center before the leg starts. Now we can add the second rabbit ear. Now you don't see the, I'm not putting a line there because this line shows you that you're looking at the inside of the rabbit ear, but on that ear, you're just seeing the back of it. So we don't see this over here. Big snake eyes. Give them a little, little eyelid on the bottom and Snake pupil, right? Snake pupil. I'm gonna give him some some eyebrows like that. <laughs> you know, what? let's try this. I'm gonna add teeth. Right. I'm the only seeing the top teeth here and a little bit of the lip curling around. <laughs> it's weird. And I'm going to put a little bit of an eyelid here. I'm not sure if you can hear my son or not. He's busy in the next room. I apologize if, if you do. Okay, some feathers. And then this comes all the way down. One long line and curls around to there, 
and then this follows that here. All the way to here, and then the rattle is here at the very tip. You ever heard a rattlesnake's rattle? A kind of a jiggly sound. And finally, down about halfway here to where the knee is, and then we continue on and. Uh, with this foot down here, and then at this knee, angles out a little bit. Is he standing straight? It looks like he's a little crooked, but uh, like I said, it's hard to do this on an angle and always get things level. Almost looks like a number four, then the knee folds behind. I forgot what I, found. I cheated on the flamingo feet because I can't remember what flamingo feet look like. That's my version of flamingo feet. I forgot to check. Here's some shadow underneath. You can always come back and fix the feet if you want to add your own, if you want to look online for some, some reference photos of flamingo feet. I can't even picture them right now. And there's, well, let's give it a little, one last thing, a little fish fin. Fish fin. All right, what are we going to call them? Flamingo, fish, rabbit, snake. Flamishaka. Flam. Flabishake. 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 Flab shake. That's pretty good. You got fla from flamingo, b from rabbit, ish from fish, and ache from snake. Flab shake. This is Floyd. Floyd the flab shake. Let's look at our two animashes from today's doodle session. All right, we've got Wilma, the Wakal Giraffe, and Floyd the Flabashake. That might be one of my favorite names so far, Floyd the Flabashake. <laughs> Look what we did. <clears throat> we did it. Again, two more animashes, completely out of our imagination. Thank you. We did this together, and it's always a great collaboration with you guys. So, until next time... I hope you're finding lots of fun things to do while you're spending a little more time indoors. It forces you to be a little more creative, and you never know what's going to come from that. Sometimes you discover things you would have never thought of before had you been doing your, your normal weekly activities. So, um, like I said earlier, send me some, email me some pictures. If you go to my website, there's my email. You can take pictures of your doodles, send them to me, let me see what you did. And let me know if you listen to the Beatles, too. I'd highly recommend that. So until next time, gang, I'll be saying goodbye. So long. Goodbye. Uh, Avita, what is that song? Avita's and goodbye. Whatever it is. Next time. Bye.